Okay. So, concerning again, we are dwelling on baptism, the philosophy about the baptism. It's very, very important always to keep this in mind. Okay? The, the text here is uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. Let the children come to me. Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. Let the children come to me. Okay, so if this is the call of Jesus, let the children come to me, don't hinder them. We say, yes, don't prevent the children coming to Jesus in baptism. Okay? Who is the minister in every sacrament? So, Jesus is saying, let the children come to me in the Eucharist. It pains me to just give a kid a blessing when I know that this child is far, far more worthy than me to receive Jesus. It is like, why are we doing this to children? Jesus is inviting them, let the children come to me. And we say, oh, okay. let the children come to me in baptism. We bring them. We tell parents, if you can baptize, they one baptized. Give this child new life in Christ Jesus. But don't feed yet. <laughs> okay, don't feed them yet. So let the children come to me in the Eucharist. Let the children come to me in confirmation. So why do we prevent children from coming to Jesus? So I be, so the Byzantines say, yeah, let the children come to, to Jesus. So for whatever reasons these sacraments got separated, we have to really to review. Okay? These were just a historical, you know, events, logistics sometimes, but it's no reason now to deny. You know, we, we, I think we, had to, we have to learn from the, the Byzantines. But Father, this has changed. Confirmation used to be much sooner than it is now. I know. The, 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 the problem in, in countries like this, like, like the U.S., is this, that sometimes uh, the people, bishops and uh, priests are afraid. I don't think that's, uh, yes, the fear, you know, is... Uh, sometimes understandable, but maybe unrealistic, but it's understandable, that they fear that once you give a child baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation, then the parents are not going to bring them for formation. I think they tried that uh, one time at uh, St. Joseph's Husband of Mary to confirm kids when they are younger, but it didn't work out. Because sometimes parents understand confirmation as graduating from the faith. Well, as really uh, the, uh, we explain to the kids, uh, confirmation means like a con, firm, like to root deeply, firm, meaning that these children maybe have become of age, as we do in the Roman rite. Now they understand the value of God. God is truth. God is love. God is goodness. God is peace. God is eternal happiness. Now they have come to understand the value of all that. Now they seek on their free will, free accord, to get deeply rooted in God so that no one can easily remove them from God. That's the meaning of confirmation. Deeply rooted. Now they understand the value. They know the value. Nobody can take them away from it. But unfortunately, sometimes they understand it as graduating from the faith. I no longer need the faith. Well, in actual fact, you said, now I want to be more firmly rooted and I grow in the understanding of that. I now have deep roots in God. That's confirmation. But if they're not bringing them, they're not going to bring them. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It's sometimes the fears are uh, unrealistic. Because if you start it in a way, it can work. That, okay, you do as the Byzantines do, but then that, that's how we do it at home. Again, the, the sacraments are separated, but confirmation is earlier. So they, you confirm them around eight, nine, mm -hmm. ten, and then you have another period. Um, I don't know how you may call it in English, but it's another period. It's like a mystagogia period. Then 
they make what we call at home a solemn commitment to the faith, like a three, four years after, two years, three years after their confirmation. They make a solemn commitment to the faith. But they have already received all the sacraments. So the sacraments of initiation, the children should receive them at a young age because it's formation, the sacrament of formation initiation. And then what we call catechesis should be explaining to them what they received until they are 16. Yes, there is a gap. No. I think when I was at uh, St. Elizabeth, when Father Kevin was there, I think we um, maybe remember wrong, but I think we had that consistency. Yes, they, they, they came all the years until confirmation. Yes, but many of our kids today don't have that. Yeah, but many of our kids today don't have the privilege. Yeah, so they come to like our CCD here. Yes, yes. So and also and also in the home, catechesis in the home. Okay. So, but uh, but what I'm proposing here is not what we do in the Roman Rite. It's what the, is done in the Byzantine Rite. So we are not Byzantines. We are Roman Catholic. Because think about it. If you, if you give children Eucharist at eight, and then they go, or nine, and then the next time you see them in CCD, like a formation, is when they are 15. So what happened between 10 and 15, when they really need formation most? Okay? Oh, yeah, so basically, sometimes parents tend to think that it's not their job to teach their children the faith. But uh, by the way, it is a... Uh, yes. yes, because Mother Church teaches that the responsibility of forming children in the practice of the faith primarily lies with the parents and it can never be delegated. If a parent delegates it, they are basically, it's like a sinning against their children. They are being irresponsible parents. The formation of children in the faith primarily lies with the parents. Okay? And it is there, you, they, you cannot delegate that responsibility as a parent. If you delegate it, you are irresponsible. So let's... Uh, in the uh, St. John Paul Communality Circle, mm -hmm. it mentions that. Yes, that yes, yes, it there. is, yes. So let's... Uh, so, so, so basically here, the, the, we said that this is wrong, that, you know, baptism is not a penance, whatever. There are two different sacraments. We have baptism and the sacrament of reconciliation. Okay? We, we always talk about this sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus instituted it in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 19 to 23, after he rose from the dead. That very day of the resurrection in the evening, Jesus instituted the sacrament of penance. He breathed on them, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. Martin Luther, the, the German who started protest Protestantism, said that when Jesus said those words, he wasn't giving them power to forgive sins. He was giving them power to preach the gospel. But we know that on a separate in incident in an uh, event in the gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 16 through 20, he gave them that mission, go and teach all nations. So these are two different events. Jesus is giving them power to forgive sins in John 20. Then the last one, let's conclude this. There is no proof, this is another heresy, there is no proof that the rite of the sacrament of confirmation was used by the apostles. The former distinction of the two sacraments, baptism and confirmation, has nothing to do with the history of primitive Christianity. Of course, we've seen the Acts of the Apostles. Okay, what baptism did you receive? And then we see the laying on of hands to receive the sacrament we call confirmation. So what, what basically they are trying to do here, the um, modernists, is to destroy the understanding of the faith that Jesus instituted all the seven sacraments. And so the modernist project is to tell us that Jesus didn't institute anything of this. Maybe they can say, maybe baptism and the, and the Eucharist, but the rest are nonsense. 
So that's what modernism will try to, to teach us. But we know for sure that, no, Jesus instituted all the seven sacraments. And in every sacrament, he himself is the minister who told us that I will be with you until the end of the age or the end of time. So, um, sometimes when you see some of our Catholic brothers and sisters, we kind of taking these sacrament light, sacraments lightly like a confession, sometimes they may have heard things like this somewhere. And then the Catholic Church, in their mind, has been lying to them all along. Because Jesus never instituted these sacraments. You can talk all you want about penance, go to confession, go to confession, and in their minds they are going, look at that ignorant man. He is a priest and very ignorant. He thinks that Jesus instituted penance. When in actual fact there is no such a thing, we all, all we need is baptism. How many of us have sinned since our baptism? <laughs> so, baptism took away all our sins, right? What about the ones I have committed since my baptism? How do I, how do I resolve those sins? I have committed many sins since my baptism. Yes, baptism made me clean like an angel. But then, after that, I have committed sins after baptism. So what do I do with those ones? Do I get rebaptized? So every time you go to sin, go and receive baptism? <laughs> baptism is administered only once, just as a child is born only once. I can't tell my mother, you can't tell your mother, I don't like you anymore, I'm going back into the womb <laughs> to be born somewhere else. It's, 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 impo <laughs> it's impossible. So baptism, we are born, we are born, that's it. Even if we reject the faith, that doesn't mean that we are not born into it. That's what confused Nicodemus when Jesus was explaining to him the mystery of baptism. Can someone go back into the womb and be born again? But Jesus was talking about baptism. So, the sacrament of confession, reconciliation, penance, which Jesus instituted on the day he rose from the dead, is the sacrament that forgives the sins we commit after baptism. God knows us. He knows our weaknesses. He knew that even after cleansing, we are going to make ourselves dirty again. But we are now already his children, but the prodigal ones. And so, he welcomes us back by cleansing us in the sacrament of confession, so that we may be dressed in that fine robe again, sanctifying grace. So, penance is a real sacrament instituted by Jesus himself. Penance is not baptism, and baptism is not penance. Protestantism rejects penance because of the teaching of Luther that penance is baptism, but it is not. Okay, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Thanks for coming, and have a very blessed week. <laughs>